Good evening, everyone. Conscious Caracol here, or Adams Fun Sale. And tonight, I'm honored by two uh, guests that I hold in very high esteem. Firstly, my co-host tonight will be Mr. Odin Moja. He's someone that you uh, recognize from previous episodes, so he needs no introduction. The resident Florida man and computer <laughs> scientist himself. And then also someone that I actually don't think needs an introduction, but I'm going to do it anyway just for maybe the minority within the, the audience that don't know, is Mr. Amar Mashaba. He is the president of the new South African political party, Action SA, and he's also the former mayor of Johannesburg. He's a businessman and entrepreneur. That's where his background is and his expertise, but he's also a described family man, self-described family man and patriot. So tonight we're going to see what his party is all about he said where our country is in trouble. I do agree with him, but we're going to be seeing what uh, his party intend to do about it. So welcome on the show, both of you. Thank you very much, Ajit, and uh, really appreciate uh, this opportunity to engage uh, you and uh, Mr. Moja, and uh, um, really looking forward uh, to the next uh, 60 minutes of engagement. Mm. So, uh, Mr. Mashaba, let's start off with... Uh, with a, a simple question when it comes to uh, action essay hmm. what are your core principles what is at the very foundation of your party uh, if someone were to ask you uh, what makes Afri uh, action essay such a unique party when it comes to its principles i think uh, you know this party is just over a year old uh, a year old born out of a groundbreaking initiative uh, launched uh, on the 6th of december 2016 called the People's Dialogue, because uh, after resigning as the mayor of the city of Johannesburg, uh, with the differences I had uh, with the DA, uh, there was an outcry from South Africans uh, that I start my own political party, but uh, with uh, no knowledge of uh, politics, uh, felt, uh, you know what, let me use my privileged position to really test uh, these people who are asking me to start a political party, if they are genuine or not. That's how the People's Dialogue was uh, was launched on the 6th of December to run until the end of February 20, uh, 2020, a three-month three months in intense uh, um, you know, engagements of South Africans. Uh, during that period, managed to reach about 33 million people who engaged us out of, uh, and uh, out of the 33 million, in just three months, 2.4 million South Africans uh, gave us the mandate uh, to start the political party. I think, you know, for me at the time when I approached my family to fund uh, this CODESA, you know, remember before 1994, we had CODESA that brought about uh, uh, the elections of uh, 1994. And when I look at it in reflection, the politicians negotiated a good deal for themselves. And us mm -hmm. uh, citizens uh, were left out. We are not the beneficiaries of uh, the new South Africa. The new South Africa for majority of our South Africans has been hell. I mean, there's no doubt about that. We, I was born and raised in an environment where I was under the impression ANC is a liberation movement um, it's a political party, but uh, I've come to accept that uh, ANC is a, a criminal enterprise. Uh, it's not a liberation uh, uh, movement, uh, you know. And I uh, wanted to engage South Africans on the type of South Africa we want. As I said, when I asked my family to fund this project, was that uh, if I have half a million people to give, uh, give us the mandate, that would really be a good starting point. Because I was not prepared to leave this country. Uh, I love this country. And I thought as a privileged South African, let me use that privileged position. I mean, 2.4 million South Africans. It was five times the number of people uh, 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 I expected. But what was interesting, coming back to your question, was the core values of what this party needed to stand for. We came out with seven core values which are not negotiable for Action SA. And these are things that, for me, um, are not negotiable. Otherwise, if people wanted me to start uh, the political party, but not uh, uh, obviously agreeing to these principles, then it was not going to be a heavy deal. Mm. The first mm. one was that mm. we needed to create an unracial South Africa, the kind of South Africa that um, all of us, uh, when Desmond Tutu uh, spoke about the rainbow nation, and South Africa became the envy of the world. We, we became a proud people, and we really looked forward to 
the building of that non-racial South Africa. Today, unfortunately, we are more divided than we were pre-1994, which is a shame. We are a party that is actually committed to free market principles, where we believe the 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 uh, the, uh, the the private sector has to play the role in in the development of our economy, particularly SMEs. I'm disappointed seven, 27 years into our democracy, uh, SMMEs uh, through the Trapada Alliance, uh, COSATU, uh, and the so-called South African Communist Party, they've destroyed our uh, uh, the small businesses in this uh, in this country. We are committed uh, to, to run a government uh, that uh, creates an enabling environment for the private sector uh, to create um, uh, uh, opportunities uh, for South Africans. That's why you can imagine I grew up in a country where South Africa was short of labor. That's why the, the apartheid government had uh, what they used to call law for scab. They used to arrest people who did not work. Us as youth, uh, when we grew up, uh, would get temporary jobs of, over the weekends and uh, uh, during whole school holidays. Today, 74% of the youth in this country are unemployed. And this uh, this is totally unacceptable. Uh, it started my business in in Harangu industrial area in 1985, January of 1985. People of Harangu used to walk to uh, to, uh, to work. I was born and raised in Amanskral, Babelech industrial area. Used to uh, employ millions of South Africans. Those factories today are lying empty. Tomorrow, I'm actually going to Kwandebele. Um, you know. That's why South Africa uh, had shortage of, of, of labor uh, during the apartheid days. Today, 12 million South Africans are unemployed. And we said this is uh, man-made. Uh, uh, you, know, uh, you know, I brought this uh, to attention of my wife many years ago that I'm, I'm convinced, and, and my wife at the time thought I was unfair when I said to her, you know, I, I'm not a prophet, but I, I see something I'm not comfortable with that uh, this uh, ANC government wants to see black people uneducated and poor. And my wife said, no, it's not really possible, uh, you know. And fortunate enough, today she agrees with me, and millions of South Africans agree with me. ANC wants to see black people poor uh, and uneducated. That's why our education outcomes are the worst in the world. Our unemployment rate is the highest uh, sustainable in the world. We believe in social justice. As much as, yes, we want to see as uh, uh, being a non-racial South Africa, it's important. We want the private sector to play their role, but we believe in social justice. I don't want to live in a society where we are known all over the world to be the most unequal society on earth. I live in Sentin, just across the, the, the freeway, there's Alexander, where people live in squalor. Worse than we would expect the pigs to live. I don't want to live in a society like that. That's why I'm doing this job. I'm not doing this job because I want to be the mayor of the president of the country. I'm doing this because uh, it is against uh, the, my principles, it's against my belief. I don't want to to uh, to be in an environment where people are oppressed and oppressed uh, by a so called by a government that they elected into into power. We believe in ethical leadership. When you serve action as a, you have to be a man or a woman of uh, substance and believe in ethical uh, behavior. You must be a God-fearing person. You must have a value and have, have a fear that whatever you do, you don't have to do it because someone else is seeing you. You must, inside you, be an ethical person. We believe in quality education. I mean, you know, the, today uh, while I'm, I was campaigning, going through to my, one of my messages, I see um, the how South African education system, it's actually the worst in the world in terms of the outcome. 80% of public schools uh, in this country are, are dysfunctional because of uh, COSATU again, through SATU, this uh, South African teachers, uh, whatever uh, nonsense, you know. We are saying we have to bring back uh, education of, our, of our, our vulnerable people because today in South Africa, if you cannot afford uh, private education, unfortunately, you know you are do your, child, your child is doomed 
for the rest of their lives. ANC government, the last 27 years, has destroyed millions of lives. With, as I say, with 80% of public schools in this country dysfunctional. We believe in electoral reform where we are saying as, a, as, as an organization that our public reps must be elected by the people through primary uh, system uh, where we, you, you don't just become a polit uh, politician because uh, your, your, your uh, politics of stomach uh, that uh, you are looking for work. When you join a uh, public office, you must be prepared to really serve uh, the society because I strongly believe if you serve society, society will look after you. You know, those are some of the principles mm, that, mm. that are not negotiable that the asset section as a stand for. Mm. Thank you. Yeah, that's a that's a solid foundation. Uh, and maybe uh, to give the microphone over there to uh, my friend uh, Odin Moja. Odin, you can jump in anytime you want. You're the co-host here tonight as well. If you have any questions or comments. Yeah. Okay. Um... First of all, I see our friend Colonel Wyatt there made an open uh, invitation to his show. And Dr. Mashaba, he's, a, he's, a, he's an American, but he's an American with a good understanding, genuine understanding of South Africa. So I could strongly recommend at some point you uh, appear on his show. But um, what I wanted to ask about was uh, what what you mentioned about, you know, ethical leadership and, and you know, politics, uh, you know, being a God-fearing person and and that sort of thing. And, and also electoral reform. And I think that's a great thing that's very needed uh, in South Africa. I've, as you know, I'm, I'm currently here in the States for a bit, but uh, what happens here is because of primaries, politicians here often care more about uh, their electorate. The people here care more about who is their mayor and who is their representative than who's the president, because they know that's what gets things done. And I wanted to ask you, is that fair, as a fair way of describing the action essay view on government is that you care, you want the people to care about who's their representative, who is responsible for this thing in my ward, in my block, rather than who is the mayor of, of, of whatever town? Is that sort of what you're getting at? Absolutely. In fact, uh, I make it really very clear to uh, all our public reps uh, that, um, your first, uh, your bosses are your your constituency or your citizens, not uh, uh, Action SA. Our political party is a vehicle for you to serve society because obviously you can't really serve society or be in government when you operate uh, as an individual. You have to, for you to really be in government, you have to really have a political party with uh, policies and principles and values of what you stand for. But ultimately, from myself, starting with me, Herman Mashaba, I'm not here to serve uh, political parties, including Action as a I'm here to serve society. Action essay is a vehicle we are using to, for which to serve our society. And that's uh, how we, op we we have to really operate. And uh, that's what uh, our constitution says, that um, you, you are there to serve society. Your first mm -hmm. allegiance is to, to the community you serve. The vehicle mm -hmm. that you are using is Action essay. Mm. Uh, no, that's a, that's a good answer. I think that's uh, the way to go for South Africa. I think for too long, as uh, my as uh, Mr. Moja explained there, for too long it's it's mattered too much on who the president is and not who is your representative on a local level. So that's definitely a, a, a very welcome change and a very welcome, uh, refreshing platform that you have there. Um, Mr. Mashaba, my next question would be, um, how will Action SA, you have all these principles, you have this plan, how will you and a lot of other parties also have their plans that they like to tell people about, but how will Action SA ensure that you make good on your promises that you make? Yeah, no, uh, the, the guys, you know, for me, uh, I always really believe and, and ask um, my fellow South Africans to say, please don't give away your life uh, to the next person. Don't give your life uh, to Action SA or to him and Mashaba. That's well and good. Uh, yes, uh, you've uh, elected him uh, to, to to govern you, but ultimately you are the boss. I think for any government uh, to succeed, it would require that partnership for civil society 
to also understand that they carry the responsibility. And you know what responsibility society carries? It's to ensure that they vote politicians in when they believe with them. And they've got the responsibility to vote politicians out when they uh, fail uh, to, uh, to meet the expectations. It is not a one-way stream that you, you can say, you know what, I'm disappointed with him and Mashaba, therefore I'm going to commit suicide. No. If Herman Mashaba promises you something and he fails to deliver, remove him. And the beauty about the South African constitutional framework is that every two and a half years, you as a voter have got an opportunity to, to vote politicians in or vote them out. And I think this whole nonsense of uh, uh, people being taught that your vote is a secret, I think uh, it's actually one way of politicians actually taking away your power. I want to encourage uh, uh, civil society to say, no, your vote is not a secret. Let politicians know that uh, they make those promises. And if they fail to, uh, to, uh, to deliver on those promises, let them know that you're going to vote them out and vote for someone else. And, uh, and that's the only way that society or politicians will stop uh, lying to you. Because what promises right now, for, you know, you know, I was really very lucky um, being brought up uh, by the wisdom of my grandfather. And he instilled this in me for many years. I lost my father at the age of two, but uh, uh, my grandfather, um, I meant everything to him. Uh, he, he shouldered me uh, until uh, his passing in 1977. And he really one thing uh, that he instilled in me is to say, listen to people, but ultimately believe what people do. So it's uh, judge people by what they do than what they say. But obviously, we've got to listen to them first. So this whole notion of people saying, no, politicians have let us down. <laughs> you have let yourself down by allowing politicians, uh, the criminal enterprises, uh, to be in government for 27 years. Vote to politicians out. If um, a politician makes promises, because the only way I can be voted into office, I've got to make promises. I've got to, because uh, I can't give you guarantees uh, uh, that I will do certain uh, things. I can only promise you that I'm fighting to ensure that I, I, I will create a professional public service. Corruption will be uh, 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 will, will, uh, will be public enemy number one. In fact, one of the core values I left out is the rule of law. I'm a very strong believer in the rule of law because it is through the rule of law that you can build any nation. Mm. So I can all promise you that I'm going to fight corruption. I hate corruption. Uh, you know, um, corruption for me is public enemy number one because it drops... Uh, particularly with the, the poor and the vulnerable of the opportunities for government to provide uh, the necessary services. But, I, mm -hmm. you know, so if I promise, I tell you I'm going to fight corruption and I don't really fight corruption, then punish me the next time. Politicians, you will see, because if you look at it, uh, particularly in this country, I can't talk about other countries, but I'm sure it's a, it's a same principle in most uh, corrupt uh, countries, is that um, politicians, most politicians are in politics because they are there to serve themselves. Politics of the stomach. You know, mm -hmm. so that is where it's, it's, a, it's a challenge. So the only way you as civil society, you can get uh, ethical, committed politicians is to vote them in and vote them out. Because, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, in, in our country, majority, a big percentage of our politicians, I'm sure, what, 80, 90% or even more of them, honestly, I can't even really uh, hire them to, to wash my dishes. <laughs> because I mean, honestly, I want that for you know. Uh, even if I, I don't pay them, I won't hire them to wash dishes. Just uh, honest, look at South Africa. Majority of our political leadership they've not done anything in their lives. Mm -hmm. The only thing that they know is, is to steal and have big mouth and uh, make uh, promises after promises, and and people let them get away with it. That's why I'm saying that civil society take the responsibility as well. Mm. Uh, Mr. Moja, before I uh, get to your question as well, I just want to take one question from the audience. 
And that is from uh, Sharon Westfall, who asks, Mr. Mashaba, what is your view on the role of white South Africans in an action essay, South Africa? Now, maybe before you answer, when I look at your party, I see there's already a role for South Africans of all communities in action essay itself. So I think that already gives me a hint of uh, what your answer will be here. You know, uh, I've uh, said uh, when I was raising the core values of um, of what this party stands for, we stand for a non-racial South Africa. Um, it, it, it hurts me 27 years into the demo, our democracy that uh, we are more divided than we were pre-1994. Um, and because of ANC failures, uh, where we've uh, witnessed uh, in, uh, uh, a lot of our white South Africans uh, live in this country with their money and, and the skill. And uh, we, who's losing? Poor black South Africans who are unemployed today. The education system that has collapsed, our infrastructure has collapsed. For me, I have practical experience. Um, I started a company called Black Lack Me in 1984. Um, I was a trader. I taken a decision that PW Bot and the National Party are not going to determine my destiny. I wanted uh, I came across an opportunity uh, to make a care product, but I did not really have uh, the technical know-how. And uh, there was a white Africana from Boxback, from Whitfield, Johan Grill approached Johan Grill to say, Johan, there's a great opportunity. Let us go out and make this uh, product. You're a chemist, you're an entrepreneur. And Johan said, uh, hey man, I don't have the money. I said, don't, don't worry, I will raise the money. And I approached uh, two great businessmen that I did not know, Mr. Uh, the Walter Dube, and through Mr. Dube introduced me to Mr. Moja. I started my business with 30,000 rand. Um, from, yeah, this uh, is not the Mr. Moja that's yeah. in the studio with yeah, us let's, today. No, let's clarify for the st stream. It's it's, it's my his, grandfather. His grandfather, you know, <laughs> his his grandfather. They didn't know me from anyway. I was just a twenty-four year old uh, uh, young man, enthusiastic, and uh, bringing uh, the, the question of uh, the white person. Johan and I started the, the idea and concept that I started. We all started as four equal partners uh, with um, uh, jo Johan, Joseph, uh, all time, Mr. Du, uh, Mr. Du, I mean, and Mr. Moja held 25% uh, for, for the loan that they gave us. And I only had 25% share in the business. And um, by 1990, we had already built our own state-of-the-art factory, employing hundreds of people to 300 people uh, in just a matter of few years. And we were employing people not on the basis of color. We were employing people on the basis of the skills. And who are the beneficiaries? People of Harangua Mabopani, they used to work. Uh, the factory was right in Mabopani, in the township. Mm -hmm. Hive of activity. It used to be the pride of uh, the the community because uh, you'd be in Cape Town or you'd be in uh, Harare. You'll have black like me products on the shelves of uh, big companies uh, and retail stores all over. Products coming from the township, mm -hmm. made to, manufactured by white uh, and black uh, the owners. So for me, working with uh, with South Africans has been something that uh, I did it in the dark days of this country's history. That is why I've always been against um, racial policies of our country. We fought. Why did you fight uh, uh, apartheid for? If uh, we we fought apartheid, but then we bring another racial policies. Yes, we the social justice uh, that uh, we can get privileged people and we get our white counterparts to understand what happened in the past. And majority of white South Africans in this country are good human beings like you and I. They've recognized and accepted that apartheid was evil and are prepared to really work with us to correct this. So it is for that reason that, uh, you know, for me, racial policies... Uh, have got no room in my life and that I would not want to associate with anyone 
this political party of ours, if you are looking for a racial party, go somewhere else. And, and I'm unapologetic about this. We are not a black party. We're not a white party. We're a South African party for South, Af for South Africans. Yeah, I think that sums it up. Um, what I was actually going to ask, and since the to, to clarify the stream, it's it's my grandfather, Mr. Mujia, not me. But uh, mm -hmm. since the topic of family has come up, it's uh, it is. I mean, Uncle Nat Spa is still there. Uh, you you're a man who is uh, focused on something that I see not brought up often, especially in South African politics, which is is family, which is something I care about deeply. Is the value of family and 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 how it, it betters you as a man as a person uh, i was wondering if you could uh, just quickly touch on on that topic the value of of family well it's actually quite interesting uh, i think um, i'm really fortunate because i'm a god-fearing person and uh, for some reason uh, growing up without uh, you know um I was born and raised in a childhood household because when I woke up to this world when I was five, six, I had no parents uh, in, uh, at home. My mother was working in Johannesburg as a domestic worker. And then I was asked, where's my dad? I lost my father. I was told I lost my father when I was two years old. My sister, 13 years, uh, my senior was in charge of the family. Well, my mother was uh, working here in Johannesburg as a domestic worker. And uh, for some reason, at the age of 22, when I decided I must be in charge of my life um, to be make it a success, not to really follow what was what I saw people around me, but I decided before going into business, I must stabilize my life. And got married at the age of 22. And I'm really so fortunate, uh, extremely privileged that um, I've been married to my wife, who's my friend, uh, who's my business partner. March next year, we'll be celebrating 40 years of our, of our marriage. Uh, that's why today I have uh, the privilege to leave uh, our businesses. And we've got substantial business interests, uh, which uh, my wife and daughter actually look after. And uh, she's my friend. Uh, she's, my, she's my number one friend. Um, I can tell you, over the weekend, we celebrated the uh, 60th birthday. And I said uh, during uh, my speech time that, uh, and I'm really grateful to my wife because she protected me for myself. Uh, you know, without uh, my wife, uh, I don't really believe I would have achieved 10% uh, of uh, what I've achieved. And, uh, and, I, and I treasure her, I value her. And, um, yeah. My daughter uh, studied in the U.S., um, got her master's there, worked in, in Miami, and uh, she didn't want to come back to South Africa. And I pleaded with her to say, please, um, um, to come and help your mom, because there's just no way uh, I can go back into, into, into something I like to do, is to go into business, because I'm a capitalist. I'm unapologetic. I'm a capitalist crusader. Uh, but I said to my uh, family, I'm not going back into uh, business until such time that uh, this country unseat the ANC. I'm committed to that project of unseating the ANC so that I can one day before I reach 70, I can go back into business and enjoy life because uh, the work of poor politician, it's a tough, brutal work, but it's a rewarding job, more especially when you are privileged like me, the ANC and demonstrate to them that uh, they are not going to abuse us. We are not going to sit back and uh, and allow a criminal syndicate uh, to represent us and do this in our name as black people. NC is not representing me. I voted for them in 1994 because I grew up thinking that they are a liberation organization. But uh, for me right now, they are a, they are a criminal enterprise and I want uh, for the world to know that the ANC does not represent me as a black person. They represent their own uh, criminal uh, interest. They don't really represent me. And they don't also represent me as a South African. Mm. 
No, Odin, that was a very good question. I think it's something that a lot of South Africans are apologetic for. Uh, they have, well, firstly, they are, they are very apologetic when they are challenged on family values, but then also on their religion. They uh, a lot of South Africans uh, do not uh, aren't proud of being Christian. They don't want to talk about it. But that's something that I see a lot with uh, your. Uh, rhetoric and what you've said out there, Mr. Mashaba, is that you are also unapologetically Christian. You know where your power and your your blessings come from, and that's very refreshing in South African politics. And talking about something else that makes you quite unique, um, your party uh, speaks about putting South Africans first quite a lot. It's a slogan almost that you see associated with Action SA very often. And it's something that a lot of political parties in South Africa seem also very apologetic about. They don't want to put South Africans first. They seem uh, they they're very afraid of being called all types of names and dirty labels. But uh, can you maybe explain to us what does what does putting South Africans first mean to Action SA? You know, I find this really very strange uh, that uh, you know majority of South Africans are behind the scenes uh, actually agree with uh, my sentiments and and they agree with it because uh, it is contained in our constitution our constitution like constitutions of uh, countries all over the world South Africa is a sovereign country it's a country with borders this country was built at the back of migrants and as a section, they say we are unapologetic about this. We want the 7 billion people of the world to come to South Africa, to come and spend their money here, to enjoy the beauty of our country, to come and invest here in, 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 in South Africa and, and create the economic activities so that our people can have employment opportunities and have the dignity. However, the Constitution of the Republic of South Africa says no. People of the world must come here, but they must come here legally. And when they are here in South Africa, they must respect the laws of our country. If not, if not, they must be sent back uh, to where they came, where they came from. I mean, it's it's a, it, it, it's a, there's no country in the world that does not really have um, such a policy consideration. So I don't understand how, as South Africans, we can really be uh, intimidated uh, and be silenced by this. And the reason why we are silenced by this is because this uh, criminal enterprise called NC are the biggest beneficiaries of working with this international criminal syndicates, and they silence anyone who speaks about it. Herman Mashaba is the last person that is going to be uh, silenced. We are going to encourage people of the world and we will protect them. We will have red carpet for, for international people coming to South Africa. But please come here legally and when you are here, please respect our, our country. South Africa is not going to be the country where failed states, failed governments actually outsource their problems to us. As I've indicated to you earlier on, 74% of our youth today are unemployed. International criminal syndicates bring drugs in big numbers into South Africa. International uh, the criminal syndicates, they bring in counterfeit goods, uh, expired goods. South Africa is a dumping country by international criminal syndicates uh, for expired uh, uh, counterfeit goods. Must we just keep quiet about this because um, uh, uh, ANC government and others will unleash uh, uh, um, insult against us. I'm afraid I'm the last person in this world who's going to really keep quiet about this. Because if obviously you want to insult me or you want to call me whatever name, I think uh, then blame the authors of our constitution, blame the authors of, of our of our laws, because that's what our laws actually say about immigration in this country so that we can keep the sovereignty of South Africa. Mm. Uh, Mr. Moja, do you have anything there you want to add or a question? No, I, I'm just adding, yeah, I think much of the uh, the bad press or attacks that Mr. Mashaba gets is because, because you know, there's a clear number of, of, of people or entities who, who couldn't care less about our borders and border security. And I, and I commend you for being one of the people brave enough to say, no, this is our border, it matters. Because in my view, immigration has a 
a, a bleed over effect on many other things, such as mm. overloading your healthcare system, such as criminality in your, in your country. And it's great. And, 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 and hopefully people will understand that, like you said, come here, but just do it legally. Um, yeah, I guess the other, the, the, one of the other questions I, I, it's one of my big questions is, is there's this general sort of, uh, notion that, you know, a vote for anyone but the top three parties is, is a wasted vote. Uh, and I don't believe that at all. Personally, I think that none of the top three parties deserve a single vote from any South African for various different reasons, but NC, DA, EFF, all three of them, none of them deserve a single vote for me or any South African. Um, so what would you say to people who, who are sort of thinking of voting for Action SA or another smaller party regionally? Uh, what is what is what would you say to them to make them realize, no, it's not a wasted vote to vote for anyone but the big three? Hmm. Mr. Musa, let me clarify something which is a fact. Um, Action SA is a new party. But we're not a small party. <laughs> Fortunately yeah. enough, we're not a small party. I think if yeah. if you have elections uh, today in the city of Johannesburg, Action SA is by far the biggest party. I think ask any of the political parties to give you their own internal polls. We release ours on a regular basis. Uh, we are the biggest party in Johannesburg. We are going to be the government in Johannesburg. We are going to be the government in in Tswane. Uh, so how can you call us uh, a, a small party? And internal okay. polls are there. We are going to govern uh, the, the, this uh, municipalities uh, that uh, we 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 we, uh, uh, we are contesting in. Some of them uh, we we would obviously want to really win all of them outright majority so that we can fast track service delivery. But we are going to be the biggest party after these elections in two weeks' time. And uh, just wait to see. And uh, ask any of these uh, so-called uh, three big parties. Yes, uh, they were uh, they were big uh, uh, in the last elections. But uh, we've got uh, the first of November elections uh, coming. Uh, mm. You will see Action SA is going to be in the metros uh, where we are contesting. We're going to be bigger than them, and by far, by miles, not uh, by a small margin. So we, mm. we're not a small party. We're a new party. Hmm. Uh, so I'm going to take a question here from the audience. Uh, Nzuzo Kati, another very brilliant man, uh, he's also been a guest on the show, uh, has a question for you, Mr. Mashaba. Uh, Nzuzo says, as a candidate for Joburg Mayor, what is Mr. Mashaba's plan for municipal entities like Joburg Water who are in a drain on the taxpayers' pockets? All MOEs in Joburg are broke. Let me tell you, uh, Mr. Kati, or is it me, so Mr. Mzuzo? Um, when Action SA, if we get outright majority on our own, I can tell you the first or uh, within uh, the first uh, 60 days, um, I'm going to, uh, to pass uh, a legislation, a report in council where we dissolve this mean, uh, these entities. The city of Johannesburg does not need to have uh, Jobe water uh, and all these entities. It's just a drain, unnecessary uh, drain on, 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 on the resources that the city does not have. You know, we, you know, these entities were started by the NC uh, to provide employment opportunities to the cadres. But unfortunately, they've put in an unnecessary layer of bureaucracy. That makes it difficult. Every time I'm a mayor of the city of Johannesburg, there's a uh, water leak somewhere. I've got to go through uh, 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 the board of uh, Jobe Water. There's a problem at City Power. I've got to go through the the the, uh, the, the board of, of of City Power. I'm saying no. We are going to uh, when when I have uh, uh, I get outright majority in the city of Johannesburg. There will be a, re a report called the institutional review, which I tried to do uh, at the time uh, when I was the mayor uh, with a seven-way multi-party uh, uh, coalition arrangement. And unfortunately, uh, ANC cadres in the system sabotaged uh, that process. Uh, 
because uh, you've got uh, the uh, the municipal system act in south africa allows you to change the structure of government but you must do it within a certain period so obviously this uh, what i actually call snakes and i don't apologize about those because um <laughs> you know they thought the way they were sabotaging me but they sabotaged the people of johannesburg so this time around that is why i'm brutal coming back and i'm making a commitment to people of johannesburg give me the mandate to really be to get outright majority all mm. these people who are going to to something that can sabotage us work for Lutuli house instead of working for the uh, people of johannesburg i will be brutal i'll show my brutality because uh, i'm not in this job to make friends i mean this job but to save our country we need to fix our country we're a shame of the world we're the people known to really be criminal uh, be, be corrupt and steal public monies i don't have to steal the end of uh, of public monies and anyone who's going to steal public monies will face the consequences so just in short these entities give action sa the mandate within uh, the, the 60 days you can attend, uh, the, even if it means I must call a special council meeting uh, to prepare that report. My policy unit uh, team is already preparing the report that we must uh, present either at the first or our second council meeting. Even when if uh, if we don't get my outright majority, we will convince our, any of the parties that is going to join our coalition arrangement has to agree on this matter that we have to collapse uh, these entities. We have, um, we'll end up with the executive director of um, water and uh, uh, electricity and so forth, directly res uh, responsible to, uh, accountable to the city manager. We don't need to really have this board that's costing us the 30 million plus in board fees. But for me, it's not if the 30 million I'm concerned about. 30 million is not money. I'm concerned about this layer of unnecessary bureaucracy, creating jobs, uh, using government to create jobs uh, for, for, for people who have never done anything. People, majority of them, as I say, I will never even, for, for, for no pay, I won't let them uh, come and clean my dishes. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Mashaba, you said there that uh, you're not in politics to make friends, and that's actually a very refreshing thing to hear because I've just been from looking for itself African politics there's too much uh, there's too much friendships going on between the parties opposition politicians making friends with ANC carders joking with them uh, treating them like their best buddies for a very long time uh, but you are very unapologetic when it comes to talking about the ruling ANC you just call them snakes you've referred to them as a virus and said that voting for a uh, action essay is a uh, the first jab uh, against this virus called the ANC um can you explain where this uh where this i uh, know not on uh, this this attitude of yours towards the anc comes from what has has lit this fire under you uh where you are not playing games and where you're not here to really uh make friends with the anc and where you're like you said where you are willing to be brutal with them in the political domain where where's this fire coming from the NC has caused so much damage uh, to this country. We are the laughing stock of the world. We are the most unequal society on earth. We have the highest sustainable unemployment world in the, the, the rate in the world. <clears throat> we are the mega capital of the world. You know, in this country, plus minus 60 people get murdered every single day. We kill and murder with one another to the Western countries at war. We are the rape capital of the world. We are a country with, uh, with laws and uh, our criminal justice system uh, captured by this criminal uh, enterprise. We destroy the lives of uh, young people by not giving them the type of education for them to really be able to compete in, in, in the world. You know, these are things that I'm, I'm heartful about. I'm, I'm angry, actually, and I, and I want South Africans to know. I'm in, actually angry because uh, ANC has, uh, um, has deceived us, has actually really fooled and abused us. And, and the sooner we democratically remove them from power, the better so that we can re uh, regain our dignity as, as human beings, as South Africans. I want my dignity back as a South African. I don't want to be traveling the world 
people look at me from South Africa, or oh, that corrupt country, or that meta capital of the world, or the most uh, the unequal society in the world. No, I don't want. I don't want those labels. And unfortunately, because of ANC, we've got these labels. Uh, you cannot really do anything about it except to actually declare war against them using the constitutional framework to remove them from power. We don't have to, to really get the in, to get the Russians to give us AK-47s to mm -hmm. remove the ANC. We just have to mobilize society, wake people up, that you are not going to sell uh, the future of your children for ANC to give you T-shirts and food parcels. Let's remove them from power. Come out on the 1st of uh, November. Let's use the 1st of November in local government elections as a first step to destroy this dangerous virus that has abused us for the, for the last 27 years. And then come 2024 with national elections, let's put ANC in the history books like we did with the National Party, where they belong. ANC belongs to history books than in government. Hmm. Uh, Odin, uh, you have a question or anything to add? <laughs> Yeah. Okay. So uh, I, I like the, the the sort of vibe that it's uh, it's not a small party; it's a new party, and that's great. Uh, one of the things I wanted to ask about is actually I've, I've been following you on social media for years now. Um, I, I I guess what I wanted to comment is I really like uh, how recently you've really stepped up your uh, your you know you made little memes and jokes here and there that picture of you sipping a tea because it seems like some people just can't keep action essay out of their mouths and uh, mm -hmm. I thought maybe you could you could comment on that that uh, that phenomenon there. Look, I think uh, you know as you know what, what, one thing that inspires me about South Africa is uh, is the positive thinking. As much as uh, NC has uh, divided us along racial lines, as much as NC has failed us uh, to be the meta capital of the world, the rape of the capital of the world, South Africans still got humor. South Africans are looking for hope. And that's why I believe Action SA has to play that role of giving South Africans hope. That's the only country I've got. I don't want to really go anywhere. I don't want to leave this country. Financially, I can go and live anywhere in the world. But mm. am I prepared to leave this country because of my God-fearing spirit? I will never leave this country because uh, I think uh, this country has been kind to me, um, put me in a privileged position. And I think for me to do this brutal work, it's a payback time. How this country has been kind to me for almost 35 years. I think mm -hmm. the price uh, that I'm paying now for working uh, in a very difficult, dangerous environment, it's a small price to pay because mm -hmm. I want my grandchildren one day to say, you know what, dad or granddad, you played the role in saving this country from ANC. Mm. Uh, Mr. Mashaba, a lot of the, the listeners tonight have been asking about coalitions, and uh, I think I can condense all their questions into a, a simple one, and that is, what is Action SA's approach to coalitions in the future were you to gain uh, some seats and, uh, and some municipalities? Not to gain some seats. We're going to get uh, the majority of the seats, uh, and we'll mm. obviously, in the event we don't get the majority, we'll have to invite other parties uh, uh, into a coalition with us. But I want to make it really very clear, abundantly clear, unapologetic. Uh, at local government level, I will not work with the ANC. Both at local, at any level of government, uh, I will not work with the devil. Um, <laughs> There's just no way. Uh, that one is very clear. The, mm. All the other parties, I'll work with them as long as uh, they understand that local government is uh, the call phase of service delivery. If we accept the fact that uh, we cannot live uh, in peace here in Senton mm. when people of Alexander don't have toilets. Mm. We are not going to live uh, in a country where uh, we we operate with uh, electrical substations which are 60 years old. We have got to spend money to build new infrastructure, upgrade the new infrastructure. But at the same time, let us ensure that on a short-term basis, um, 
we provide basic services to those uh, who ANC has punished. Because mm. I think that's uh, really, I'm referring in this particular case uh, to the DA, because uh, I think um, the reason why I left the DA is because uh, DA did not really believe uh, that uh, I should spend money in uh, communities where people did not vote for them or people who don't pay taxes. People, there's uh, people in the townships who are, are unemployed today. Is it their fault for them to believe uh, in the ANC, those who voted for the ANC? And I think I wanted to, to deal with one narrative and false one for that matter, that ANC is popular. ANC is a dying rural party. If you look at uh, their performance over the last uh, three national elections, from 2009 up to the last elections with uh, the, uh, CR17 and Tumamina, ANC is a dying party. Come mm. 2024, they're going to be under 50 percent, whether Action SA is there or not. Mm. So, so for me, I'm committed to really unseating them, and I'll never work uh, with them. Mm. But at national so, level, at, at national level, the EFF will work with them at provincial, uh, sorry, at local government level. They, you know, in the Freedom Front Plus, there were two. If if I can tell you, I worked with seven. Uh, coalition partners. EFF was not a coalition partner. They used to vote with us on an issue by issue basis. I cannot remember in the three years I served with the EFF, EFF one day coming asking me for a tender. I've never had a case where um, uh, the 6,000 cases of corruption with over 800 uh, corrupt of NC officials that are fired when I had evidence of uh, EFF being against it. I fired all these people and they supported me, them and the Freedom Front Plus. Freedom Front Plus never objected to us servicing poor communities, but the DA did not want me to do that. So at national level, EFF have got a very serious problem with them. I can't work at national level with them because at national level, unfortunately, it's about policy. And I'm a capitalist. I believe in a capitalist system. I believe in an unracial South Africa. And unfortunately, EFF does not really believe uh, in an unracial South Africa. They don't believe in free market economy. For that reason, I will not even want to, to start the debate that... Um, I can compromise because these are things that are not are not really uh, negotiable, uh, you know, as, as far as I'm concerned. So I won't. So that is why it's important for us as Section SA and working with South Africans to understand that 2024 is going to be crucial, mm. very crucial to make sure that you don't have uh, ANC and EFF coalition for them getting over 50 percent. So we have to work hard that uh, we, we the ANC, we bring them down to under 20%, then if ever remains under 10%, then uh, if ever we don't, as Section SA, get outright majority with us, then we can consider working with other parties. And I can tell mm. you they are not perfect. Are we also perfect as uh, Action SA? I've always admitted as a human being, uh, I'm, not a I'm not a perfect human being. Uh, mm. I'm fallible. But one thing for sure is that uh, we, I don't make deliberate mistakes. I don't because uh, you know my grandfather taught me that this world is not perfect. That's why, as a human species, God has given you this brain to assist you to navigate the challenges. But I will never mislead anyone. I'll never steal anyone's scent. Um, so what you see is what you get. And, uh, and I want to operate uh, with uh, political parties uh, that obviously are ethical that uh, when we negotiate uh, and we agree on what we go forward on issues, we must all mm. agree or disagree. But at national level, there's no way I would really go into, uh, into a coalition with the EFF. And I think my my view is very clear, as I say, because uh, I don't believe in, 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 in racial separation of, of South Africans. I don't mm. uh, believe that uh, government has got any role to play in the economy. The economy is going to run, be run by the private sector. As as government is to create an enabling environment for the private sector, uh, uh, at this day, uh, uh, I just don't 
or to want to negotiate with people who are saying that they want to take my land. Uh, you know, I've got my house which is fully paid for. I don't know anyone is standing in the house I, I live in. And the political party that says uh, uh, the uh, the land to my, the, the house uh, to, uh, and my title did does not mean anything. I think I don't want to talk to mm. political parties like that because uh, I mean, look at what happened to Zimbabwe. I don't want to see another Zimbabwean happening in this country. So therefore, I would not want to have discussions with such parties. But at mm. local government level, fortunately enough, there are no policy considerations. It's about budget where we agree. Are we going to tap this road? Are we going to upgrade these uh, substations? Are we going to deal with this sewer network uh, to upgrade it or put in new ones? <laughs> Those issues, there there are no political ideologies. It is just uh, mm. the, the, the focus on where to direct uh, the, the budget. And uh, EFF has been very supportive for them and the Freedom Front Plus. Hmm. Uh, Mr. Mashaba, uh, I'm going to ask uh, two more questions from the audience. And uh, Odin, you can also ask uh, one more question, because seeing as we're approaching right. the end now. So this is a, just a very short question here from Johan Badenhorst, who asks, uh, is uh, Mr. Mashaba a Christian? I think that's just a yes or no answer, uh, Mr. Mashaba. <laughs> Born, raised uh, up to this age of 62 as a Christian, but... Uh, coexist with other religions because fortunate enough all the other religions all of us uh, believe in god i believe in god so my christianity does not really give me any privilege or special status um, i coexist uh, with other religious uh, beliefs um, if uh, you're, you're a hindu you're a muslim you're a jew or you whatever i think uh, uh, I actually love to live in a society like that where we can learn to coexist. What is important for all of us is to believe uh, in God. Hmm. My, being, and, my, my, uh, Christ, my Christianity does not really make me special to, hmm. to, to a, 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 a Hindu or a, a, a Muslim or a, a Jewish person. No, we are all the same. As long as what I think for me is important uh, is all of us are praying to God. Hmm. And then, Mr. Mashaba, the final question from the audience is uh, What is Mr. Mashaba's view on gun rights? So, people's right to defend themselves. This has been a hot debate in South Africa with the ANC wanting to take people's right to self defense away. Uh, what is your and Action SA stance towards uh, South Africans' right to self defense when it comes to legal firearm ownership? Tell me, I mean, this is total madness. Uh, in a country where this government is failing to protect us, 60 people are being murdered on a daily basis. Hmm. It's because this government is failing to protect us. So you can imagine uh, if uh, we are unable to protect ourselves as individuals, as families. I'm unable to protect myself and family. Until such time that we can have a government that can protect us as citizens, then we can talk about the gun control. As far as I'm concerned right now, every South African has got the right within the law to, to own a gun, as long as uh, you respect our gun laws. Hmm. All right, uh, Mr. Moja, you can have the, the final question before uh, uh, we say goodbye. I was actually, uh, <laughs> I was actually going to ask about the gun rights thing. Uh, I think uh, it's a hot topic. Uh, I guess then, I guess my next question would be, you know, when, when, where can, uh, where can people vote for Action SA, sign up, that sort of thing, and uh, hopefully, will you, will we see you? And uh, I'd love to interview along with uh, Chris Wyatt, Africa the colonel, mm. uh, at a later date. So yeah, I, I recommend you going on his show, but. Uh, where can we, uh, you know, get involved with Action SA? Yeah, that's a good question, Odin. Seeing as, uh, as I understand it, we're not you're not going to be able to vote for Action SA in every province. Is that correct, Mr. Mashaba? 
Absolutely. Unfortunately, and I'd really like to apologize uh, to South Africans uh, um, in municipalities where we are not contesting. Unfortunately, it's not uh, possible. Um, we had a, a one-year-old party and uh, we did this deliberately um, because uh, the whole idea around only contesting in six municipalities, we identified municipalities where we can contest win and be in government because we don't want to really be on the opposition benches. You can do so much in in a day in government than you can do in 27 years on opposition benches. And if you look at all the political parties in this country, all of them, I mean, uh, um, all of them are friends of the ANC. I mean, they're, they're starting with the DA. Uh, big friends of DA. That's why where, uh, when uh, when I had differences with them, they negotiated, they had private negotiations with the ANC to remove me um, uh, through a, a motion of no confidence. So it, the DA has accepted uh, that uh, their opposition and, um, and unfortunately people who are voting for them, they do such injustice uh, to South Africa because DA is also one of those parties, unfortunately, as far as I'm concerned, they polarize our nation uh, along racial uh, lines. So if anyone wants to, to know about us, uh, we are only contesting in six municipalities, the three metros in jo in Gauteng, Johannesburg, Tswane, and Ikuruleni. And uh, in KZN, we're contesting at, at Tequini and two small municipalities, one in Kwadukuza and, uh, and Newcastle. But we'll be ready to contest the national in 2024. So if anyone wants to really know more about us, you can visit us on our Action SA website. All the details are there. You want to be a volunteer, you want mm -hmm. to to be a member you can register it'll take you less than two minutes and immediately you get your electronic membership it doesn't cost you a cent and uh where on a daily basis you'll get to as and when necessary get communication from us more especially as we build up uh, towards elections so we can remind you about uh, your your right and actually the need for you to save this country through a peaceful means because the only way you can save uh, this country and remove this ANC is through your vote. So, yes, we encourage people to join up and um, at no cost uh, to you. Uh, when you register on our, on our website, you immediately get your membership. Uh, um, and uh, please uh, read your, our constitution and our values, obviously, before you sign up. Because obviously, when you sign up, you've got to understand that uh, you abide uh, by the constitution of uh, of uh, this uh, organization. If you are a racist, you believe uh, you want the racial party, please go somewhere else. If you don't believe in free market economy, please go somewhere else and so forth and so forth. So please read those things so that you know what you're signing yourself into. Mm. Uh, Mr. Mashaba, thank you very much uh, for joining us. Before we say goodbye, I just want to say thank you to Hatscorp Software as well, who gave a 28 Rand uh, tip super chat here. Thank you very much. Um, and yeah, thank you for the, the enlightening conversation. I'm just going to put your website there on the screen. Uh, if people want to go visit it, there's also a link in the description to Action SA's website that you can click on to go visit it, go check it out, go look at what their platform is. If that sounds right to you, maybe consider voting, but that's up to you. That's your decision. I'm not going to tell anyone who to vote for. You can go check out. I think uh, their website states pretty clearly what they stand for, and you can make the personal decision yourself. Also, I'd like to say thank you to uh, Mr. Moja, uh, Woten ZA on Twitter. You might know him. Uh, thank you very much for, for joining me uh, tonight as well. To co-host, uh, you've also <laughs> added a lot to the conversation and uh, added a lot of new depth, uh, asked some questions that I didn't think about. So thank you also. Lastly, for everyone that tuned in, thank you for all your questions. Thank you for all your comments. It's really been nice to read what you also have to say. And uh, thank you for also contributing to the, to the show with your questions, your very good questions. So gentlemen, this is where I say goodbye. Uh, Mr. Mashaba, thank you. Once again, thank you for your valuable time. This was a very great conversation. I enjoyed it. And uh, best of luck for November 1st. I hope you uh, achieve your mission. I think you have a noble fight ahead of you. Thank you very much. I appreciate the opportunity and good night.
Mm. Good night, everyone, and uh, God bless. Cheers.